Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I would like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for supporting the show. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff for this episode. Starting off over at datamation.com, there's an article here called Best Linux Browsers. It's basically a a quick run through of some of the uh, best browsers that you'll find on Linux. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, they list uh, uh, Firefox, they list Chromium, uh, Quipzilla, which is kind of a lightweight browser. Um, so definitely if you're looking for a new browser in Linux, definitely, uh, check this out. It's, uh, worth taking a look at, um, just to see, you know, if you already use one of those browsers, great. And if you're looking for a new one, you know, that's an article worth checking out. From associationsnow.com, open source projects are failing to pass IRS nonprofit muster. Uh, though organiz- well, so let me, before we get into this, let me give you a quick rundown because I, I have a fair uh, amount of my audience does not live here in the United States. The IRS is the Internal Revenue Service here in the U.S. And uh, basically it's the tax man, if you will. So um, we all pay, you know, everybody who works here in the U.S., um, pays taxes and it is the internal revenue service that collects those taxes and you know it uh, makes uh, uh, you, you know you're responsible for filing your taxes and all that other good stuff so anyway um, that's what the IRS is so it says here though organizations that produce nonprofit software have long been granted tax is exempt status the internal revenue service recently denied it to two applicants One had waited more than four years for a determination and found the reasons for denial alarming. Tax status headaches that have been, that have dogged politically oriented nonprofits appear also to be given the open source community a migraine. In recent weeks, the Yorba Foundation, which makes Linux productivity software, revealed that the Internal Revenue Service had denied the group uh, the 501c3 tax exempt status, despite having granted it in the past Uh, to many other organizations with open source goals, including the Linux Foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation, and the Free Software Foundation. The report comes a few months after OpenStack was denied a non-profit 501c6 designation. The 501c3 designation is generally set aside for groups with charitable, literary, or educational goals, uh, while a 501c6 generally applies to business groups. So part of the problem, apparently, is that the term open source is uh, raising some IRS flags, as did the terms Tea Party. I haven't seen the actual application, but um, yikes. Um, Occupy and uh, and others on the agencies be on the lookout list. So... um, Pretty interesting, and it's, it's again somewhat alarming. I I'm curious, you know, uh, you know what what the IRS is, you know, realistically expecting for a tax exemptness. You know, I mean, there are a number of open source projects that are tax exempt here in the U.S. Even though they operate like a business, they don't have to pay taxes because technically they're nonprofit. So it uh, should be pretty interesting to see what they consider going forward to be tax exempt. From uh, tech.co, dynamically loading code securely with Android. Android has quite a number of security features that are built into the operating system that significantly reduce the frequency of impact of security issues. The system is designed so that when you build your apps with the, uh, default system and file permissions, you can avoid having to make difficult decisions about security. So uh, the Android application sandbox that isolates all your app data and code execution 
Um, it's a framework that has robust implementations of common security functionality, including cryptography permissions as well as secure IPC. So this article um, essentially gives you a rundown of how to dynamically load code in Android in a secure fashion or a somewhat secure fashion, um, reasonably secure fashion, if you will. So if you are a computer programmer doing a bunch of Android application development, uh, definitely check it out. From VentureBeat.com, a new Firefox 31 focuses on improving developer tools. This is pretty cool. Uh, so Mozilla released the new Firefox 31 today, and that is uh, today as of July 22nd. Um, which gives Macs, Windows, and Linux, and mobile Android users a lot of new features to explore with a special focus on developer tools. The new desktop version gives users a search field in the new tab page, which allows you to begin a new search without moving your cursor over to the search bar located at the top of the screen. Um, the Windows version now handles PDF and AUG files in the browser. Huge win, if you ask me for those of you who've got to use Windows. And another new feature has been added to block malware from downloaded files. So uh, there's a link to the full desktop change log in this article, and as always, everything I've linked, uh, I talk about is linked up in the show notes for this episode, uh, which is season 17, episode six. The Android version of Firefox 31 adds an option to reorder panels in the home screen and an ability to refresh synced tabs on demand. Additionally, a Firefox Hub API has been implemented to allow add-on developers to display their own tools or content on the existing Firefox for Android home page. So, uh, pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. It's, it's, uh, it looks like it's a fairly substantial update with the uh, new developer tools, so definitely take a look at it if you're a developer and want to do some Firefox development. From AndroidCommunity.com, Google shares what Samsung Knox is bringing to Android. So uh, Google and Samsung have a pretty interesting and lively relationship, although the two seem to be at each, other, at each other's throats over topics such as OEM customizations, Tizen, and Android Wear. The two have come together at the last Google I.O. to tell the world that they are collaborating on bringing Samsung Knox uh, to Android. So uh, Google is finally divulging what that partnership really means for the future of Android. So the main focus is to uh, make Android an enticing option for not just for personal smartphone use, but for the workplace as well. It, that's one place that Android has really been kind of lacking a little bit um, you know it's always been an ios relatively ios world and android getting android devices to work uh in the enterprise has been a little painful because a lot of enterprises you know as many of the those out in the audience are aware a lot of enterprises it's it's microsoft servers and you know active directory and there's no way of getting around that that's that's what a lot of businesses run and so if you have an Android phone and you want to be able to talk to Exchange and, you know, all that, all that good stuff, you know, that's something that uh, has been painful. So this is, is bringing that and making it easier to, to use Android devices um, it, in the enterprise where, the, you know, the, it's not necessarily an open source or Linux centric world. So uh, definitely uh, check this out pretty cool article. I'm looking forward to see, uh, you know, what they can bring to bear for that sort of thing. Um, cause that's typically been, you know, an area that to Android and open source in particular has really struggled with, uh, in an environment that's not, you know, exclusively, you know, Linux based or open source based. So should be pretty interesting. From pcadvisor.co.uk, how to install Ubuntu touch on your Android phone or tablet. This is pretty awesome. I'm including this here. I, I haven't actually tried this, but it's basically a how-to. You know, there's been a number of Ubuntu Touch articles that we've covered here in the show over uh, the past year or so. And this apparently uh, is one of those ways 
on how to get Ubuntu Touch on an Android phone, there are some caveats. So definitely before you do anything, if this is something you're gonna try, read through the entire thing, make sure that uh, you know what you're doing before you do it, because uh, you might potentially brick your phone or at a minimum void the warranty. So um, I, I'm including it here for a reference, but uh, you know, uh, be warned, you know, this is not necessarily something you want to want to do on a phone that uh, you absolutely have to have in a working state all the time. So from the register.co.uk, Debian, Linux, and Android share a bed in an upcoming distribution. A new Linux distribution is looking to overcome the limitations of Debian on ARM, uh, which at my current job, our development is Debian on ARM. Uh, by running both Linux apps and Android apps in native mode. Uh, produced by the group that created the micro XWin kernel-based XWindows implementation, the Volks PC distribution is designed to give users an ARM Debian environment that supports Debian's range of desktop applications while improving support for things like YouTube playback and HD video. So they've created essentially a unified distribution that allows both Android and Debian LXDE and XFCE applications to run simultaneously at native speeds. On ARM, the distribution is based on a modified ARM HF Debian Wheezy root FS. Um, the developers claim that apps run under both environments at native speeds. The only changes to Android are in startup scripts providing full compatibility with existing applications, and Micro XWin provides a high-speed X-Windows framework for the system. So pretty interesting. Um, I'm curious if anybody tries this out in the audience land, let me know how it works out. I'd, I'd love to see, uh, see it in action, maybe a video or something. You can send me a link um, or something of that nature, linux at quicksurf.com. Anyway, uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show. And uh, for those of you who already have, thank you for supporting the show. And I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.